Diabetic Obesity and Weight Loss Foot Care Made Easy. This is a video we've been getting a lot of requests for, so we wanted to put it out and get this information out to you. Do you have diabetes? Take off your shoes and socks. Ask your health care provider to check your feet. Report any changes in how your feet look or feel. Every day, one, wash your feet thoroughly. Two, dry your feet thoroughly, between the toes especially. Three, apply moisturizer to your toes, but not between your toes. Wear moisturized, moisture-resistant socks. Five, never walk barefoot. Six, wear shoes that fit. Very important, because when you wear shoes that don't fit, you get blisters, corns, cold, redness on your feet. Uh, so it's a really bad thing for someone with diabetes. Uh, stop diabetes from knocking you off your feet. Also check your feet for sores, cuts, blisters, corns, redness. Do not soak your feet. And of course, do not smoke. And watch the color of your feet to make sure they're not getting discolored or picking up a, a, a dark tint. Foot care. Always wear orthotic insoles in your shoes. Take the ibuprofen, namoxin, or aspirin before going for a walk or exercising. To help you protect your toes and reduce friction and rubbing as you walk, apply petroleum jelly to the palm area so that your toes don't stick to each other or rub together. Use an overnight treatment. Petroleum jelly with cocoa butter can be used as an effective overnight cosmetic treatment for dry, cracked feet and heels as it helps create a sealing barrier, locking in the essential moisture your feet need to repair themselves. Foot doctors recommend that women avoid wearing heels that are higher than 3 inches. Try to put your weight on the center of your foot as you walk. Give yourself a quick foot massage with a tennis ball. It's a great feeling. Just put a ball under your foot and roll it back and forth. Use a toe stretcher. It straightens and realigns problem toes. Elevate your feet while resting when you get home from a walk or from exercising. But try when you watch TV, put your feet up on a cushion. Avoiding trouble. Improving the circulation of blood to the feet can prevent problems. Exposure to cold temperatures or water, pressure from shoes, long periods of sitting, obesity, or smoking can reduce blood flow to the feet. Even sitting with your legs crossed or wearing tight elastic garters or socks can affect circulation. On the other hand, raising the feet, standing up, and stretching, walking, and other forms of exercise promote good circulation. Gentle massage and warm foot baths can also help increase circulation to the feet. Comfortable shoes. This is critical. Wearing comfortable shoes that fit well can prevent many foot ailments. Foot width may increase with age. Always have your feet measured before finding shoes. The upper part of the shoe should be made of a flexible, uh, soft material to match the shape of your foot. Shoes made with leather can reduce the possibility of skin irritations. Soles should provide solid footing and not be slippery. Thick soles less impression when walking on hard surfaces. Low heel shoes are more comfortable, safer, and less damaging than high heel shoes. Corns and bunions. Corns and calluses are caused by the friction and pressure of bony areas rubbing against shoes. A podiatrist or physician can determine the cause of the condition and can suggest treatment, which may include getting better fitting shoes or special pads. Over-the-counter medications contain acids that destroy the tissue but do not treat the cause. Many medicines can sometimes reduce the need for surgery. Treating corns or calluses yourself may be harmful, especially if you have diabetes or poor circulation. Bunions develop when big toes are out of, of line and become swollen and tender. Bunions may be caused by poor fitting shoes that press on a deformity or an inherited weakness in the foot. If a bunion is not severe, wearing shoes cut wide at the instep and toes may provide relief. Protective pads can also cushion the painful area. Bunions can be treated by apply, applying or injecting certain drugs, 
using whirlpool baths or sometimes having surgery. Ouch. Hamatose. Hamatose is caused by shortening the tendons that control toe movements. The toe knuckle is usually enlarged during the toe back. Over time, the joint enlarges and stiffens as it rubs against shoes. Your balance may be affected. Hammer toe is treated by wearing shoes and sockings with plenty of toe room. In advanced cases, surgery may be recommended. Using a toe stretcher straightens and realigns problem toes. Now, this one in this picture here, it looks like it's stiff and solid, but it's not. It's actually really rubbery and elastic, and you put it on your toes one toe at a time and keep it on there for uh, 15 or 20 minutes at a time, and it really does help straighten those, those hammer toes out somewhat uh, to help you relieve the pain. We offer two wonderful ebooks for immediate download. Uh, the power of mindfulness for weight loss is not only about weight loss, it's mindfulness to get control of your diet, control of your life, control of your smoking, control of your diabetes, all the things that take place in your head to help you become more healthy. The Canogenic Diet, Discover the Low Carb Difference, is another wonderful book that we've been uh, selling quite a few of them. Uh, to get the word out that it's carbohydrates that have caused the obesity. We also have available at SaturdayDiet.com our uh, three packages that we created, a bronze package, a silver package, and gold package at a price point for everyone's budget. So go on over to SaturdayDiet.com and pick up your copy also for immediate download. So... Please share, subscribe, take advantage of all the products that we're offering, and get your weight down. You can do it. Everyone has a point where they decide it's time. And we can help you with our programs that we offer and the wonderful ebooks that we offer. See you in the next video. Please subscribe, share, and let everybody in your world know about Joan Bars and the Saturday Morning Diet. Bye-bye.